Hello everyone. So, in the previous lectures we discussed about shock waves, the basics of shock waves, the equation of state of shock waves, uh, attenuation, interaction and reflection of shock waves and also we have discussed about the basics of material science, uh, about crystal structure and defects. Um, so, now we will um, talk about um, uh, this, this is a new chapter that is shock wave induced phase transformations and uh, chemical changes. That means, um, due to shock waves, uh, what are the physical and chemical changes happen in the material. So, the shock waves as we know, I will write as W for shock waves, it, produ um, it produces physical and chemical changes in the material, changes in the material So, when it passes through the material, so it um, the material undergoes some transformations. So, first report on this um, was from F.S. Michel in 1954. So, he first reported that kind of phase transformations which is polymorphic phase transformation. polymorphic phase transformation of iron at very high uh, pressure. Uh, I think he reported at 13 gigapascal. So, what he thought is the alpha iron which is FCC uh, phase is transformed into gamma phase. Uh, sorry, the first one is the alpha iron which is a BCC phase transform into a gamma phase which is FCC. However, uh, this um, was later corrected. So, actually the corrected transformation is alpha phase BCC to epsilon phase which is HCP hexagonal close pack. So, if you are um, wondering what is polymorphic phase transformation, many of you I think uh, know about it that is polymorphic uh, phase transformation is a characteristic of solid uh, uh, structure solid crystalline material of solid uh, crystalline material so um, that can exist in multiple structures. Multiple, uh, especially multiple crystal structure. So that is called polymorphism. So, uh, from one crystal structure to different crystal structure, uh, this kind of changes happen. That is called polymorphic phase transformation. So. We will see this with a unary phase diagram. This is a unary phase diagram of iron. Of iron. Unary, as you know, that is one component. Unary means one component, which is in this case is iron. There can be binary phase diagram. Um, that you know binary phase diagram example is iron carbon diagram, iron carbon phase diagram or you can say iron uh, uh, sorry uh, iron um, uh, cementite Fe3C um, Fe cementite phase diagram. So, uh, in this case uh, for iron uh, the phase diagram, so uh, the y axis is temperature T and then x axis is pressure that is uh, in giga Pascal uh, and then temperature is uh, is in um, degree Celsius. 
So, what happen is at very high temperatures iron will be in gaseous phase and then this is at let us say uh, above the 3000 degree Celsius then it will be found in liquid stage and then in this smaller portions it will be in uh, delta phase which is BCC and in this phase it will be in gamma which is FCC here in room temperature we will get it as BCC which is called alpha phase and then at very high uh, pressure it will be epsilon phase HCP. So, what um, uh, the earlier reports uh, by um, F. S. Michel uh, stated that is uh, actually uh, from uh, the transformation from alpha uh, to uh, epsilon phase. So, this is the transformation uh, what he reported. So, we can see uh, clearly see it from unary phase diagram. After uh, that uh, probably one of the um, uh, important publication uh, from D. Curley and uh, Zemishan, Zemishan in uh, 1961 reported um, a transformation of carbon uh, to diamond with the help of shock waves that is at um, a very at high shock pressure. So, that is uh, still even industrially used that um, this uh, process of uh, applying very high pressure uh, that is uh, uh, the shock wave induced transformation from uh, carbon to diamond and uh, in this process uh, we can have very fine that means in uh, uh, micron level very fine I will write micron level uh, fine range of diamonds. Diamonds can be can be produced and then um, Dremin and Brusov in 1968 Dremin and Brew. So, in 1968, um, that they have presented a uh, summary of the of the the material changes that happen uh, under shock waves. They presented a summary of the material changes uh, that happen under shock waves. So, so, we know that the shock wave has very high energy, has very high energy and this energy is dissipated when it uh, when shock wave passes through the material. the material and this dissipation of shock wave that will uh, uh, that means the deposition of the energy into the material. So, high energy deposition in the material in the material can uh, lead to can lead to physical and chemical changes uh, in the material. So, that can be um, summarized by Dremin and Brissov. So, so, these are the processes. Um, it can be polymorphic uh, phase transformations that means changes from one crystal structure to other and then some 
may undergo chemical decomposition decomposition that means uh, the reaction in which uh, the once um, substance is decomposed into uh, two or more substances and then the opposite one is chemical synthesis which means uh, two or more substances uh, react together to form a more complex substance and then polymerization of monomer polymerization of monomers uh, that means monomer uh, molecules um, to form a uh, polymer chain and then the last but not the least one is the defect formation that is uh, the crystal defect formation as we have learned the defect can be point defect uh, or it can be line defect or it can be interfacial defect like twinning as you know the line defects are mostly uh, dislocations. So, these are the changes, these are major uh, changes um, that can happen uh, due to uh, shock wave propagation in a material. So, there are some other features like uh, there can be uh, the local gradient of temperature, development of, of local temperature gradient. temperature gradient due to um, this is due to collapse of um, uh, voids collapse of voids which as you know uh, happen because of the high velocity flow of material. So, that can create a development of local temperature gradient and uh, that can uh, this development of temperature uh, gradient can uh, lead to melting of in interface this can uh, lead to melting of any interface present in the material interface and then um, also uh, the relative motion of the powders produce uh, severe friction. So, that produce uh, severe friction a uh, shock wave shock wave can produce very high pressure and high temperature and also it can uh, produce uh, uh, high shear stress and strain high uh, shear stress and uh, also strain. So, these can be these uh, uh, can be uh, uh, both may be it is it may be local rise or it can be rise in the entire body and uh, entire body or it can be a global rise. And these effects even can, can be more pronounced, more pronounced, even more pronounced when the material is material is uh, either a uh, porous material or a uh, mixture of powders powders like it can be a uh, mixture of uh, different uh, powders of different elements or different compounds. So, what we have learnt is um, uh, so these are the some different features characteristic of shock wave propagation 
uh, regarding the physical and chemical changes and uh, in some of the um, earlier publication also include uh, uh, one from uh, a few from R A Graham and his uh, co-authors that was like published at different times 1986, 1918, uh, 1989 and uh, 1993. These publications um, summarized some of the processes, let us say uh, one is configuration change. So, these are the processes that happen due to shock wave uh, and then mass mixing and then activation I will let you know what are these processes uh, activation and maybe uh, heating. So, these happen uh, due to shock waves configuration changes uh, can include morphology or and porosity chains and mass mixing uh, means materials from neighboring particles neighboring particles forced together together and uh, and also forced to undergo relative motion relative motion and then activation um, uh, means the high density of defect formation may lead to defect means that crystal um, defects high density of uh, defects uh, may lead to increase uh, the reactivity of the powders may increase the reactivity of powders reactivity of powders also um, shock wave produces high temperatures and that we know that it actually produces intense uh, temperature fluctuations temperature fluctuations so these are the, the um, points summarized by um, from the early researchers so as we know this shock wave uh, propagation um, is a very fast process it is a very fast process. Uh, so, um, it is uh, the application of shock wave is very uh, has very short duration it is in the order of uh, microsecond application of shock wave uh, is has very short duration it is uh, 1 to 10 microsecond uh, in most cases. So, it is uh, does not have enough time for diffusion to take place for significant diffusion. For significant diffusion and so and we know that different mechanisms are involved mechanisms uh, involved uh, of during uh, involved in the formation and decomposition uh, of different uh, phases or compounds and also the pressure I will write P for pressure, pressure decreases 
uh, the diffusion co coefficients diffusion coefficient coefficient and so uh, this lead to um, difficulty uh, for the foreign atom uh, to penetrate into or move inside the um, and the other other element other element or compound we will talk about the thermodynamics of phase transformation of phase transformation so most of the um, uh, part of the discussion in the Mark Mayer's book taken uh, uh, from a reference is uh, that is Duvel and Graham 1977 that is one of the early publications in this area. So, uh, the transformation of solid Uh, depends on or controlled by when is uh, thermodynamics and kinetics that mostly as you know means um, deals with rates of reactions and also we will talk about phase stability so which phase is stable and depending on that the phase transformation happens so these phase stability depends on um, either external factors that controlled by external factors like uh, pressure I will write P for pressure and T for temperature. So, pressure temperature these are external factors and there can be some internal factors which uh, also control these phase stability internal factors which include composition composition of the material and internal stresses due to the facts. due to we can write mostly uh, crystal defects or you can write simply defects as we know point line and interfacial defects. So, there are internal stresses associated with these uh, defects. So, that uh, controls the phase stability which phase will be stable. Um, uh, so, that depend that will decide the phase transformation. So, as we have already discussed that shock wave will produce sudden changes of pressure and temperature that we already discussed uh, many a times and uh, we know that this will result may result in generation of new phases new phases so that's why we are discussing these phase transformation so the phase transformation can be broadly of two types i will use a new slide for this phase transformation can be broadly categorized into two categories first one is diffusional phase transformation who 
input in which involve diffusion. And the second one is diffusion less phase transformation, diffusion less phase transformations. So, diffusional phase transformation includes this includes may be different uh, phase transformations like nucleation and growth of precipitates, precipitates and then sphenoidal decomposition, sphenoidal decomposition. and cellular transformation. So, we will not discuss about these. So, we will, we will just write 1, 2, 3, so that we understand that these 3 are sub category of um, the diffusional phase transformation. So, these uh, type of the diffusional phase transformation we will not discuss much because during shock wave propagation uh, they are not so important, not important because um, the shock wave propagation involves very limited time because of limited time, so time is very less, limited time of shock wave propagation wave propagation. So, that means uh, limited time to uh, diffusion to happen to um, yeah diffusion to happen that means time is less diffusion cannot happen and there can be some post shock effects post shock means after the passes um, after the shock wave passes through the material some effects can be there and that is uh, that can be residual heating can induce precipitation residual heating can induce right what the can can induce precipitation the formation of precipitates, precipitation. So, this is post shock effects. However, we are more interested what happens during the shock wave propagation, not what happened after the shock wave propagation. So, so this is the post shock effects are not during shock wave propagation. I will let S w for shock wave. So, uh, hence we will not discuss this um, the, the phase transformation much. So, rather we will go to the diffusionless phase transformations that can be of different types. So, we will take number 1 as displacive transformations, one of the diffusionless transformation, displacive transformation. then second one is massive transformation and the third one is melting or solidification as you know both are opposite to each other and then number four is order disorder. transition
number 5 vaporization or condensation or condensation and number 6 is sublimation sublimation S U B L I M A sublimation. So, uh, let us discuss this. So, displacive transformation is uh, essentially the uh, due to displacement of atoms or ions from its regular positions and or we can say that change in uh, crystal symmetry or change in crystal structure. which as a result of um, happens as a result of change in bond length or change in bond angles and then massive transformation is uh, happens to an alloy uh, without changing the composition uh, it may change from uh, one phase to the other phase structure change without change of composition without change in composition and uh, the, this as the composition is same the diffusion a uh, long range diffusion does not uh, need to take place for this and uh, it is a fast process and we can understand the number 3 the melting and solidification then order disorder transition is nothing but uh, transformation from ordered phase to disorder or disordered phase to ordered phase and then vaporization and condensation which is um, um, also opposite to each other. Then sublimation is as you know um, the transformation uh, directly from solid to liquid uh, solid to gas sorry solid to gas that is we call sublimation that you are probably um, all of you know about that. Sorry uh, I actually overlook the spelling of sublimation. So, I am not sure how I overlooked uh, that spelling. This is sublimation. This is the correct spelling. So, um, there can be another classification. So, we had one classification which is diffusional and diffusionless, and there can be another classification of phase transformation, which is uh, we will discuss in details here. So, phase transformations can be first order and second order transformations. So, this um, discussion will be based on thermodynamics. So, as we know from your thermodynamics classes probably you might uh, know that the phase stability can be determined by Gibbs free energy, free energy under condition of constant pressure or constant temperature. Condition of first one is maybe constant pressure. or I will just write P constant pressure or and constant temperature. Suppose, if you draw a plot like this sorry. So, how the G will vary with uh, T because constant pressure means the T will vary and here how the G will give free energy or oh sorry I probably did not mention that the Gibbs free energy is capital G that all of you know that we generally use that symbol and capital G in the second case at constant T how the G will vary with P. So, uh, why a phase transformation happen or when a phase transformation happen? Transformation happens the answer is uh, 
a thermodynamic system seeks to minimize the Gibbs free energy seeks to minimize it wants to minimize uh, the Gibbs free energy. So, from the above two plots although we did not plot it just where I am showing z and t axis here and z and p in the second one. So, what we can um, how we can determine is um, so we can uh, plot these curves for different phases and from there we know that uh, for which phase um, that the value of the Gibbs free energy is less um, from that we can find uh, which phase will be stable in that um, condition. So, we will do some little bit of um, calculations, uh, we will try to get some derivations related to these determination of uh, phase stability. So, we know uh, the Gibbs free energy free energy expression capital G is H minus T s you know H is enthalpy which is equivalent to the total heat content of the system and then T is absolute temperature I will write T m p sort in sort. So, absolute temperature that means uh, the reference is 0 Kelvin and then S is the entropy. I hope all of you learned uh, these expressions whatever we will discuss here in your thermodynamics class. And as we know H can be <coughs> um, expressed in terms of internal energy plus pressure into volume. So, E is the internal energy of the system. So, then what we can do is we can write is like E plus P V minus T S which is equal to um, the Gibbs energy Z. So, what we will do here is we will take a differential of D G and that will give you differential of internal energy P d v differential and then uh, v d p then t d s minus s d t. So, we will now use thermodynamics first law and, and, and uh, second law. So, first law is can be we know can be written as differential of internal energy um, is um, related to heat and work done P d V and then second law from second law can be related as Q by T T equal to D S entropy. So, if you combine these two expressions, so what we can get is uh, D E is equal to T d s minus P d v. So, if you rearrange it uh, on only one side, so that will give you P d v minus T d s is equal to 0. So, this expression if we use it here, if you see all the three terms are present here. So, d e I will just uh, cut it uh, from here. So, P d v and minus T d s. So, this will uh, be 0 and then the resulting expression will be V d p minus S d t. So, this is the expression we get the differential of Gibbs free energy. So, now we will consider two cases one is constant temperature constant uh, T the case number 1. So, which means d t is equal to 0. So, that will give differential of G is equal to V d p, V is the volume P is the pressure as you all of you know. 
So, the um, sorry this will be partial <coughs> partial generally our z v assume as a function of p and t and uh, so it is a partial of z uh, with respect to p at constant temperature we will be equal to v and in the second case um, we have constant pressure which means d p is equal to 0. So, that means your differential of g is equal to um, minus s d t which can be uh, written as partial of g with respect to t at constant pressure will be equal to minus s. So, what these uh, um, statements uh, what is expression mean is when you increase the pressure for the first case in a constant temperature. So, as pressure increases I will write the symbol as pressure increases uh, it favors uh, phases phases of lower volume that you can understand that means uh, more compact volume. So, because we want a phase with lower Gibbs free energy. Um, so, as you see that Gibbs free energy vary with um, um, the pressure that means the partial derivative of g with respect to p will give the v uh, equal to is equal to v. So, that means, um, if you increase the pressure. So, if you want to a, uh, get a stable phase, uh, then it will favor a phase with a lower volume and similarly, in the other case uh, as temperature increases it favors a uh, phase with higher entropy higher entropy. So, these conditions uh, uh, we should remember and then uh, we will just draw this out. So, uh, we have what is first order diff transformation phase transformation and the second order phase trans transformations. So, so what we will draw we have some already drawn lines here. So, I will just uh, draw on top of that. So, we have this is uh, we are having as um, gives free energy on the y axis and the pressure on the x axis. So, we have two phases. So, first one is let us say beta phase and which is uh, we are right having a solid line till this point and after that we will have a uh, dotted line. So, this is uh, phase beta and then we have an alpha phase which is we are first drawing a dotted line and then we are having a solid line. Okay. So, and then this line vertical line at the point of intersection of the two phases um, we are writing as p t. So, these are I will write it here somewhere alpha beta are phases two different phases. So, um, and at p equal to p t we have equilibrium uh, at p t we have equilibrium or uh, we can call um, p t as transformation temperature transformation from one phase to the other. So, it is called uh, transformation uh, sorry I told probably transformation temperature this is transformation pressure transformation pressure. So, what we are talking this is first order transformation phase transformation we will talk about second order transformation as well, but more important here is the first order phase transformation. So, um, so you can you can see that that if I will write here also this is beta and this is alpha. So, beta line is solid before p t why it is solid before p t because as you can see the dotted line uh, sorry the dashed line alpha um, has a higher Gibbs free energy before p t before we reach that uh, equilibrium point. So, that is why the lower um, g lower gives free energy will be the stable phase. So, 
uh, we can write it here below PT below means below uh, lower pressure than PT below PT uh, beta is the stable phase stable phase and above PT above PT solid phase is alpha phase you can see from so if you go on the right hand side of PT that means uh, alpha has the lower uh, gives free energy so that is uh, uh, so, so that's why we are writing the solid line only for the stable part okay so be, before before PT beta is um, stable and after PT after means above um, the pressure higher than PT uh, so we will we'll have alpha phase uh, stable and also we can draw this the derivative of uh, this z so partial derivative of um, z with respect to p at a constant temperature whatever we found in the uh, in the last slide equation so what will happen is if you take this as that 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 curve will uh, will show for beta and then the other part will be again we will write it dotted because that is not the stable phase so we will add the stable phase as the solid line so here it is alpha okay the same beta line will continue till here and alpha line will continue till here so now as we have um, uh, we have found that uh, this partial of z with respect to p uh, at a constant temperature is given as v so this plot um, actually uh, is corresponding to that volume V and we can see that at PT at PT that is at equilibrium pressure or transformation pressure. So, uh, we have a volume jump. So, there is discontinuity here. So, this point is uh, we have a discontinuity discontinuity and this is uh, we will write is a delta V that is as we as I have shown you that this is corresponding to a uh, volume. So, what we can say that the change in volume accompanies the transformation. So, I will write it here. So, um, change in volume during the transformation. During the transformation. So, from the because first order derivative we got that there is a discontinuity and uh, the discontinuity um, corresponds to a change in volume. So, now we will see the second order phase transformation, second order phase transformation in the right hand side. So, we will draw a similar curve. So, P on x axis Z capital Z on uh, uh, the y axis. So, here we have little different the phases are we are writing as um, that alpha phase and uh, we have let us say that alpha line we extend up to uh, um, here and then uh, let us say our stable phase is on the right hand side of our transformation pressure P t is alpha prime. So, in this case alpha and alpha prime has same slope at transformation pressure P t. So, and then if you we draw that. So, if we draw the first order derivative of the z uh, which has uh, sorry this partial of z with respect to p um, at a constant temperature on the y axis and p on the x axis. So, this will give us a curve something like this and then this alpha prime will be sorry please uh, do not mind about a, any gray line which is already there. So, that may confuse you only just <coughs> check the red line 
which I am drawing now. So, this is corresponding to P t and uh, <coughs> this is the solid line here is alpha prime and other correspond to alpha. Um, so, uh, basically this we can see that at transformation pressure there is no discontinuity in this case, this is continuous at this point no discontinuity or it is continuous. Okay. So, that means no volume change because the first um, um, partial derivative of G with respect to P at constant temperature gives us the volume. So, no volume change uh, in these type of transformations. So, then what we will do is we will draw another curve which is a second order of derivative. Uh, so, what we will do I will uh, write somewhere here it may look congested, but uh, second partial of Z with respect to P at a constant temperature. So, uh, so this is on uh, along y axis. So, that gives us uh, some curve like something like this. This is for alpha and above P T pressure higher than P T uh, this looks something like this. So, the second uh, partial derivative that is for alpha prime. So, now you can see uh, there is a discontinuity at the transformation pressure discontinuity discontinuity. So, so that means uh, the second order derivative is discontinuous here. So, that is second order phase transformation, but we can see that we do not have any uh, volumes change associated with it, but in the case of uh, the first order phase transformation uh, the volume change change in volume uh, during the phase transformation is happening. So, uh, we will see example of these two kind of phase transformations. So, as we as we have discussed there are two kind of phase transformations one is first order and second one is second order transformation. So, first order transformation um, can include number one let us say mertensitic transformation. I am sure most of you know that and we have discussed this uh, mertensitic transformation and which will uh, Okay, then we will talk about the second one uh, that is melting and the third one is uh, solidification. These are the some examples of first order uh, trans phase transformation. If you see all of them have some uh, volume chains. Um, so, the for the first case uh, mertensitic transformation volume uh, generally it will increase and then melting also know that it generally increases the volume and solidification will um, decrease the volume will decrease. So, in the second order transformations which are not very important to us uh, right now uh, the magnetic transition. and number 2 is uh, order disorder transformation transformation. So, these are not um, the volume change is not involved in these type of transformations. So, all earlier plots in the previous slide are at constant uh, temperature we know that these are all previous slides if you go back to the previous slide these all are um, constant temperature or isothermal um, constant temperature curves all are constant temperature curves. So, we can have even constant pressure curves as well as I initially even told you. So, constant pressure isobaric plots also we can have. So, then 
we have the temperature on the x axis and z in the y axis. So, that will have a, a constant pressure kind of curves and that way also we can uh, determine the phase stability. If it is a constant temperature curve then we are having pressure in the x axis and if it is a constant pressure um, curves we are having temperatures in the x axis. But uh, as we know the Gibbs free energy is a function of both pressure and temperature. So, uh, if you want to involve both pressure and temperature, uh, so both uh, we can include both P and T, these plots will be then surface not one curve. So, uh, the surfaces uh, that means, ok, I will write this is a function of pressure and temperature. So, so what we will do is um, similarly like what we did now is we have that curves for different phases and then we found uh, a point where both the phases exist or equilibrium. Uh, point equal, suppose in the in the earlier curve, so I showed you the equilibrium pressure or transformation pressure. So for this, uh, these kind of um, ex, uh, when we express both the pressure and temperature with a surface, um, uh, that means Gibbs free energy can be expressed uh, with a surface. Then what we do is uh, we take the intersection of the two surfaces, like we did uh, intersection of the curves two curves as a uh, the transformation pressure here what we will do is intersection of two surfaces that means uh, let us say surface 1 g 1 uh, which is a function of p t and g 2 which is also a function of p t we will get a curve out of it. So, that curve out of it and that is related to Clausius um, Clapeyron uh, equation P E Y R O N Clapeyron equation. So, uh, so we will do this now. So, we know that the, the Gibbs free energy is a function of pressure and temperature. Then we will take the differential of G, and um, that will give us partial of z with respect to uh, p at a constant temperature and uh, uh, multiplied by dp and then again uh, partial of z with respect to temperature at a constant pressure uh, multiplied by dt. So, so these uh, two surfaces will represent the two phases. So, now uh, for two surfaces we have this two surfaces right. So, now for two surfaces what we can have is d g 1 minus d g 2 differential minus of the differential of the two surfaces that will give us differential of z with respect to p at constant temperature for surface 1 minus differential of z with respect to p at constant temperature for surface 1. Uh, the entire thing multiplied by d p. Similarly, the other terms are differential of z with respect to temperature at a constant pressure for material 1, uh, differential uh, partial uh, sorry the partial derivative of z with respect to um, t at a constant pressure multiplied by d t. So, if you want to talk about equilibrium equilibrium we know this uh, both the surfaces that is intersection point uh, intersection curve uh, will be d z 1 equal to d z 2. So, that means, um, the left hand side will be equal to 0 and, uh, and then the right hand side what we can do is from our earlier equations as you know that I will write it somewhere uh, here and the left hand side what we got is as partial uh, partial of z with respect to p at constant temperature is v and 
partial of z with respect to t as uh, constant pressure is minus s. So, here what we will do is from now uh, we will replace those um, x, um, on the partial derivatives. So, what we will get is v 1. So, 1 is for the surface 1 minus v 2 multiplied by d p. So, as we have a in this expression we have a minus here uh, this expression we have a minus. So, uh, so we will have a not s 1 minus s 2 it will be uh, s 2 minus s 1 multiplied by d t. So, this will give us d p by d t differential of uh, derivative of p with respect to uh, t that is temperature uh, is equal to uh, we will write uh, s 1 minus s 2 divided by v 1 minus v 2 and we can write like del s divided by del v sorry um, del v and also, uh, we know that uh, uh, delta z is equal to uh, delta h minus t delta s, which is now in this case we are taking a 0. So, delta h minus t delta s and that will give us delta s is equal to uh, uh, change in enthalpy by temperature. So, if we use this so, that can be written as uh, delta H T delta V. So, this equation um, will give us um, the effect of pressure on transformation temperature and this will be required for our uh, later discussion. Sorry, I made a mistake here. So, I should have wrote uh, here this one is 2 and similarly in this case also I um, left out that uh, this should be 2. So, uh, the first one is 1, this is 1 and this is 2. Uh, with this um, I will uh, close uh, the today's lecture. So, what we discussed today is uh, we have discussed about phase transformation, especially uh, phase transformation. Uh, that involves uh, that occurs during um, the shock wave propagation and we discussed this um, from a point of view of thermodynamics and uh, we have uh, seen that how uh, different factors uh, can influence this uh, phase transformation. Also we discussed about uh, the classification of this phase transformation. We have we got diffusional um, phase transformation and diffusion less phase transformation and we have also classified it as first order and second order phase transformation. So, we will continue this discussion in the next lecture. Thank you.